Hello and welcome to Grocery Shopping for Diabetes. My name is Christina, a registered dietitian from Wise Markets, and I will be walking you through this grocery store tour today. Before we start through the aisles, let's discuss what we should include on our plates. Aiming to include as many food groups as possible in meals will help ensure that we are meeting nutrient goals and are staying satiated throughout the day. For breakfast, try to include some protein, low-fat dairy, whole grain, fruit, or non-starchy vegetable in some way, knowing that we will not always get every food group. Oatmeal with yogurt, nut butters, and fruit as mix-ins, or omelets loaded with veggies with a side of whole grain toast and a piece of fruit are great ways to maximize nutrition and include as many food groups as possible. For lunch and dinner, aim for about half of your plate to be a non-starchy vegetable, such as green beans, broccoli, carrots, or Brussels sprouts. One-fourth of your plate to be whole grain or starches, such as brown rice, quinoa, or whole wheat pasta, or a potato. And the last one-fourth of your plate to be a protein source, such as fish, meat, poultry, tofu, or tempeh. This will ensure that our meals provide the most nutrition. Also keeping in mind that staying hydrated is essential to good health too. So drinking water frequently throughout the day and between meals is encouraged. Looking at the nutrition facts label on products is helpful to understand what nutrients you are getting from it. First, looking at the serving size can help you make decisions on your portion size, which takes us to step two looking at the total carbohydrates in each serving. This is where knowing the serving size comes in handy so you can add the correct number of carbohydrates from the portion size that you are having of the product. Lastly, choosing items lower in saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium, and higher in key vitamins, minerals, and fiber will be the better options. A quick rule of thumb to use for this is the rule of five and 20. Looking at the percent daily value in the right-hand column, if the percent is around 5%, then the product is low in that nutrient, aiming to keep the saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium around this 5% mark. If the percent is around 20%, then the product is high in that nutrient, aiming for this for key vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Now let's take a trip through Wise Markets. A few ways to incorporate produce into your diet include smoothies, adding vegetables to an omelet or grain bowl, topping a pizza with your favorite vegetables, adding fruit to oatmeal, mixing a dried fruit into a trail mix, or dipping veggie sticks in hummus or another type of dip. One last note on produce is to shop in season. This is a budget-friendly way to include produce items and maybe try new varieties too. Let's start with produce. Our goal is to aim for five cups of fruits and vegetables each day. This may seem like a lot, but fitting them into each meal or snack will really help them add up throughout the day and create nutritious meals. Fruits and vegetables come in many different forms, such as fresh, frozen, canned, dried, and 100% juice. These are all great options, just noting a few things. First, frozen produce items have the same nutrient content as their fresh counterparts and are perfectly okay to use, especially when an item is out of season. Canned items are also very similar in their nutrient content when compared to fresh, noting to look for fruits canned in 100% fruit juice instead of heavy or light syrup because the syrup contains a lot of unnecessary added sugar. For canned vegetables, look for the no salt added or low sodium varieties to reduce sodium content. If these are not available, rinsing off the canned vegetables will remove some of the sodium. Lastly, juice is a great option and does count as a serving of a fruit or vegetable, but juice does not contain the fiber that a whole fruit or vegetable has. The fiber is what helps reduce the spike in blood sugar, which is something to consider. Also noting the serving size of the juice and its carbohydrate content compared to the same whole fruit. You may have heard the phrase, eat the rainbow, and that just means to eat a variety of different colored fruits and vegetables because each color has their own nutrition and health benefits. Green supports heart health and regulating blood pressure. 
Orange or a deep yellow color supports eye health, skin, and immunity. Purple and blue color support immunity and healthy aging. Red supports heart health and immunity. White, tan, or brown supports heart health and also immunity. Both fruits and vegetables are a great source of fiber, water, and nutrients, making sure that we are choosing appropriate sizes because too much of a good thing is not always good. Common examples include larger apples or other pieces of fruit or potatoes, which are okay to eat, but we do have to know their size to calculate the correct carbohydrate content. Starchy vegetables such as corn, peas, and potatoes do contain more carbohydrates than non-starchy vegetables, but they do still contain fiber and other vitamins and minerals. In the deli section, there are many meat and cheese options to choose from, and that is just the beginning. Look for the low sodium meat and cheese options to reduce sodium intake, which can affect blood pressure. Sodium is used to preserve these meats and cheeses, so there could be a considerable amount of sodium in each serving alone, which can really add up quickly. Deli meats are a convenient option, but also consider preparing your own chicken or turkey in large batches for the week, which can reduce the sodium content you are consuming. Another item found in the deli area is hummus. With many varieties to choose from, hummus makes a great dip for veggies, spread for a sandwich, or a topping for a grain bowl. There is even chocolate hummus, which is a nice treat that satisfies your sweet tooth, but still provides fiber, protein, vitamins, and minerals. Some stores have salad bars that offer the option to make your own salad, which makes it an easy on-the-go nutritious meal without any meal prep, and you know that you are getting quality ingredients. One thing to note is that you are in control of your portion sizes, and too much of a good thing is not a good thing. Making sure that we keep our plate balanced like we had discussed a few slides ago. Pre-made deli salads, sandwiches, soups, and other convenience items are also available, but again, watch the sodium content because it can start adding up quickly. All of the nutrition information for the pre-made deli salads and other items are available online at wisemarkets.com. The bakery section of the grocery store can be the most tempting with all of the delicious looking pastries and baked goods. Pastries and similar items are loaded with sugar and fat and do not contain many healthful nutrients that our bodies need to function properly. Of course, we can have these items every once in a while as a sweet treat that we really enjoy, but consuming these items regularly can wreak havoc on our blood sugars and weight. Look for whole grain options such as whole grain bagels or multi-grain bread. Whole grain means that all three parts of the grain, the germ, endosperm, and bran, are all included in the product, which is important because they contain fiber, healthy fats, protein, vitamins, and minerals, whereas refined grains such as white bread and pastries do not contain all three parts of the grain and have most of those nutrients removed. Another great option are bran muffins because they do contain at least one whole part of the grain, which adds in extra fiber and nutrients rather than a refined grain. Wise does offer a variety of sugar-free pies and cookies as well as some no sugar added options noting that these no sugar added options do still contain sugar, which will need to be accounted for. A great way to control the sugar and fat you consume in these bakery products is to make your own. Finding and trying out new recipes with ingredients that add more fiber, vitamins, and minerals could be a fun way to experiment with food. Bananas, avocado, or even applesauce are great swaps for butter, oil, and sometimes even sugar, especially those fruits because they have naturally occurring sugars in baking. Also, using a whole wheat or white whole wheat flour will add in some extra fiber and nutrients to lessen the spike in blood sugar. Next, we are going to talk about meat and seafood. When selecting these protein options, choose the leaner cuts. For beef, this would be the round or loin. For pork, there is the tenderloin, center loin chop, or ham. For poultry, there is skinless chicken or turkey. For seafood, there is salmon, tuna, and sardines. And while we are on the topic of protein, if you choose not to consume meat or want a variety of protein sources, beans, legumes, nuts, soy, and eggs are also good sources of protein. 
About one cup of beans or lentils is equal to about two ounces of meat. Pairing that with another two ounces of a protein source will reach the goal of four ounces. It is recommended to consume one serving of seafood at least two days per week because it is a great source of protein, but also provides other nutrients such as omega-3 fatty acids that benefit the heart, eyes, and brain. After you have chosen a cut of meat, if there is visible fat, trim or cut it off to reduce the saturated fat. Limiting processed meats, such as bacon and sausage, will also help cut down on the saturated fat in the diet. Some cooking methods include grilling, broiling, roasting, and sauteing. These use dry heat and do not require much to be added to the protein so it can maintain its health benefits. One serving is about four ounces, remembering that we want to have one fourth of our plate to be a protein source. A good way of visualizing this is to use the palm of your hand, which is about one serving. For dairy, the goal is to consume three servings per day, and there are many options and varieties to choose from. When choosing dairy products, try to stick with the fat-free or low-fat dairy options, but there is emerging evidence that the whole milk, full-fat varieties have possible health benefits as well, including in those with diabetes. Starting with milk, there is the traditional cow's milk, which is a good source of protein and other nutrients such as calcium, riboflavin, and vitamin D, which are all necessary for strong bones and a healthy body. Non-dairy plant milk alternatives offer nutrition, although not the exact nutrition that cow's milk provides. Depending on the type of plant-based milk, whether it be almond, cashew, soy, rice, hemp, pea, or oat, each will provide different nutrients some more than others, which is why it is important to read the label. If we are looking at specific nutrients as compared to cow's milk, soy milk is comparable in the protein content. Oat milk has slightly more sugar because it is made from a carbohydrate. And some alternatives have some vitamins and minerals added in. But again, it is important to read the label to know exactly what you are getting and what gaps there might be. Next, there are also many varieties of yogurt. Greek yogurts contain the most protein when compared to regular. Each brand of Greek yogurt is a little different in flavors and texture, so if you don't like one, try another one out. Yogurt can also hide a lot of added sugars, especially in the flavored or fruited varieties. To avoid those sneaky added sugars, read the nutrition label or choose plain yogurt and add your own fruit to it. Butter is another dairy product that is often associated with margarine, which is usually made from refined vegetable oil and water. There are also some other plant-based alternatives, such as those made from avocados. These all have a similar consistency and can be interchangeable, but some margarines and plant-based alternatives contain less calories and saturated fat than butter and might be an option worth exploring, remembering to always read the label and too much of a good thing isn't good. When talking about dairy, we can't forget the cheeses. Cheese makes a great addition to meals and snacks, watching out for portion sizes. Cottage cheese and ricotta cheese are high in protein and also have a reasonable amount of sugar, but watch out for that sodium content. Eggs are also found in the dairy section. They are a good source of protein and are low in carbohydrates. From scrambled to hard boiled, eggs are very versatile as well. To summarize, dairy is a good source of protein and other nutrients such as calcium, but there are other alternatives to dairy products that can fit into the diet as well. Frozen foods are a great convenient option, especially when a produce item is out of season or you are worried that the fresh version will turn bad before you get a chance to use it up. Produce items are frozen immediately or very soon after they are picked, making them frozen at peak freshness so no nutrients are lost. Frozen fruits are great for smoothies, oatmeal, or making your own frozen yogurt. For vegetables, it is best to choose those that are plain, with no added sauces or seasonings, because these tend to be high in sodium, and you can always add your own. There are frozen meals available in this section, which are quick and convenient, but can also be packed with hidden sodium, especially if you consume more than one serving. If you choose to purchase and consume these meals, look for those with less than 600 milligrams of sodium per serving. You also don't have to restrict yourself to just that frozen meal. 
You can add a side of veggies, salad, or even another protein to round out that meal and leave you feeling satisfied. Frozen pizza is another common go-to item with many options to choose from. Look for those with whole grain crusts, cauliflower crusts, or those topped with veggies to ensure that you are getting some fiber and moving toward meeting your goal of five cups of fruits and vegetables for that day. Canned foods have a lot of versatility, nutrition, and are affordable. Starting with canned vegetables, choose the no salt added or low sodium varieties to reduce your overall sodium intake for the day. As I'm sure you've noticed so far in this store tour, there are many products that contain large amounts of sodium and it will really add up throughout the day. If you cannot find these low sodium varieties, after opening the can, rinse off the vegetables to remove some of the sodium that is on the surface. When selecting canned fruits, look for those canned in 100% fruit juice instead of the syrups because the syrup contains a lot of unnecessary added sugar which can really spike the blood glucose level and add significant calories to the day. Fruit is already sweet so there doesn't need to be too much more sugar added to it. For broths and soups, again look for those low sodium varieties that have less than 600 mg of sodium per serving. For broths, this might be more difficult to find, but go with the option that offers the least amount of sodium. Canned chicken and tuna packed in water are great affordable sources of lean protein. For tuna, there are many different flavor varieties available in pouches that are a quick addition to a lunch or enjoyed as a snack with some whole grain crackers. In the canned food section, tomato products are also found. Avoid those with added sugar, which is most commonly found in tomato sauces. If you like the sweeter taste, use the product with no sugar added, and you can always add a little bit of sweetness to your final dish. Canned products have a long shelf life, so it is easy to keep pantry staples on hand. When choosing grains, try to make as many as you can whole grains. Whole grain or whole wheat as the first ingredient is an indicator that it is a whole grain product. Again, a whole grain has all three parts of the grain, the germ, endosperm, and bran, which all contribute fiber, vitamins, and minerals, whereas white or refined grains do not have all of those nutrients and will spike your blood glucose more quickly. The daily goal for fiber is 25 to 30 grams per day, which adds up if you incorporate it into all of your meals and snacks throughout the day. There are a few different options for pasta in this aisle, such as whole grain, white, bean, lentil, and veggie pastas. The bean and lentil varieties are a great alternative if you cannot consume gluten. Another alternative to pasta is zucchini noodles, or zoodles, which are found in the produce section. Other veggies, such as other squashes and sweet potatoes, can also be spiralized to form a noodle. Rice is another type of grain. Brown rice is a whole grain, but there are also white rice varieties available. Another option for rice is to have riced veggies, such as cauliflower, broccoli, or squash. These can be found frozen, or you can buy fresh produce and make your own veggie rice. Lastly, as we talk about grains, we have to mention bread. Again, choosing those whole grain or whole wheat options. Just noting that just because a loaf of bread is brown does not mean that it is whole grain. This is where reading the label is important, looking for the words whole grain or whole wheat. This also includes bagels and tortillas. Choosing those whole grain options or swapping them out for veggie alternatives is a great way to add in more fiber to help stabilize blood sugar levels as well as reduce overall calories. The baking aisle has all the essentials to make your favorite baked good and season your favorite savory dish. Here are some tips that can help add some nutritious flavor to your diet. 
First, when baking, there are more options than just the white all-purpose flour. There is also whole wheat or white whole wheat flour varieties. In recipes that call for white all-purpose flour, you can swap out one-third of the amount of the white all-purpose flour with whole wheat flour. White whole wheat flour is the same as whole wheat, but made from a wheat that is white in color, and this can be swapped out one for one using the same amount of white all-purpose flour as white whole wheat flour. Oils are used in baking as well as cooking. Canola and olive oil have heart-smart, unsaturated fatty acids, which we want to get more of in the diet. Cooking sprays are a good way to reduce calories and now come in many different types of oils. Avoid or limit the solid fats, such as lard, because they are high in saturated fats, which if consumed in excess can cause problems for our heart and arteries. Flaxseed is another great tool in the baking aisle. It is important to note to use the ground flax seeds because our bodies can better use the nutrients they provide in this form rather than the whole flax seed. It is versatile and can be added into baked goods and other snacks such as energy bites, granola, smoothies. The options are almost limitless. For those who like to bake but don't consume or have eggs, flax seed combined with water can make an easy fiber-filled substitute. Storing the ground flaxseed in the refrigerator or freezer will extend its shelf life. Seasoning with herbs and spices can upgrade a meal without adding any extra fat, sodium, or sugar. There are so many varieties and spice blends available, you might have a difficult time deciding on one. Look for those that are low in sodium, or if you find one you really enjoy and it does contain a decent amount of sodium, Keep in mind to not add any more salt to the dish that you are preparing it with. You can also make your own spice blends to customize it to your flavor preferences and always have them on hand. We have now made it to the snack food and cereal aisle. Most packaged snack foods are high in sodium, carbohydrates, and sometimes fat without any other nutritional value, which is why they should be limited in the diet and enjoyed on occasion. Some of the better for you options in this aisle include unsalted or lightly salted nuts, popcorn, dried fruit, jerky, and baked snap peas. Nuts pack in a lot of nutrition such as fiber, healthy fats, vitamins, and minerals. What to watch out for with nuts is the serving size because the calories can start to add up quickly since they are so small and easy to consume a lot of. Popcorn is actually a whole grain, so when it is lightly salted or just has a few herbs and spices as a topping, it is actually a really good choice for a low calorie snack. Prepare your own snacks using some of these ingredients that I previously mentioned, such as making your own trail mix or energy bites, which you can find recipes for at wisemarkets.com forward slash recipes. This is a great way to control what goes into your food. When looking at cereal, either hot or cold, go for those whole grains. Oats themselves are a whole grain. When choosing cereals, look for those with three to five grams of fiber per serving and less than eight grams of sugar per serving. There is a wide variety of condiments to choose from. First, let's start with oils. Choose olive and canola oils most often because they are high in unsaturated fats like we have previously discussed in the baking aisle. The negrets are oil-based and tend to be lower in calories when compared to the creamy varieties of salad dressings. Choose vinaigrettes when possible to reduce calories in saturated fat, but watch out for their sodium content and added sugars. You can make your own vinaigrette with olive oil and some herbs and spices to avoid any unwanted sugar or sodium. Condiments are a sneaky place where sodium and sugar hide, so making sure that we are reading the label and aiming to keep the sodium below 140 mg per serving and limiting that added sugar as best we can. Fruit preserves and jelly are going to have some added sugars for flavor, but pairing those with a whole grain and healthy fat will help round out that meal or snack and prevent a spike in blood sugar. Nut butters, such as peanut, almond, and sunflower butter, are good sources of protein and fiber. 
When selecting nut butters, try out the natural varieties that only have a few ingredients, such as the nut or seed itself, and salt. Especially in peanut butter, there can be some hidden trans fats, which our bodies do not process very well. One way to see if there are trans fats in the product is to look at the ingredients list, and if the words hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated are there, then you know that trans fats are present. Similarly to whole nuts and seeds, it is easy to consume large portions of nut and seed butters in one sitting. Although they provide good nutrients, the calories can start to add up quickly. Most Wise Markets have a pharmacy that is happy to answer any questions you might have regarding diabetes, such as questions about medications, blood glucose meters, prescription refills, or anything else that you can think of. You can also consult your own doctor or pharmacist on these questions if it's more convenient. The Wise Pharmacy also sells supplies such as meters and lancets if you are in need of those. Here are some guidelines on estimating portion sizes. A deck of cards is about the size of three ounces of protein. A die is about one teaspoon. A poker chip is about one tablespoon. A golf ball is about two tablespoons. The size of an egg is about one fourth of a cup. A tennis ball is roughly one half of a cup, and a baseball is about one cup. These visual cues can be used to estimate how much of a food you are having. Here are some recipes from the Wise Markets Healthy Bites magazine that feature some of the ideas that we went over in this store tour. There is the zoodle chickpea and avocado salad, the grilled steak and avocado salad, and the peanut butter and berry chia snack bars. These and more recipes can be found at wisemarkets.com forward slash recipes. The Wise Dietitians offer nutrition counseling as well as virtual cook-along and nutrition education classes for adults and kids, which are both free to any Wise Club card holder. Wise Markets is also on social media where we post some recipe videos and cooking tips. Wise also has the Healthy Bites magazine, which comes out every few months. You can pick this up in store or online at healthybites.wisemarkets.com. The Wise Dietitian email is there at the bottom if you would like to contact me or ask any questions. Thank you all for joining me on this grocery store tour for diabetes.